Banking crisis fears return as another large US lender announces they are on the brink. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Insights, brought to you by Ainsley Bullion and the Gold and Silver Standard. Today, we welcome back Branko, because it's Wednesday, who has been looking at the situation that's actually unfolding with yet another bank. We, it seems that actually Branko, every time we get him on, he's sort of the you know, foreteller of doom. So we had on, on Monday, we had Alex on telling us all these wonderful things about um, why we should buy platinum. And now Brent goes on to tell us all the doom and gloom about um, bank banking situation, but that's all right. We need to take the good and the bad. So welcome back, Brent. How are you going today? Yeah, good, good. Another day, another bank in crisis. So it's just yeah, a normal yeah. Wednesday, I think for us. It, it is, it is. So um, the article today highlighted another one that has sort of been at that First Republic situation, it has been the background. I think we've been sort of aware of it, sort of, um, since the Silicon Valley situation. Yeah. But uh, it's really gotten headlines a lot over the last sort of 24, 48 hours. So can you sort of start us off today with that background of of what's going on and how we got to where we are right now? Yeah, so just a bit of a deep dive before we get into it. So First Republic, um, yeah, a, ma- a major regional bank, not the biggest bank, but of a reasonable size. and Basically, their share price got rocked yesterday. They were down 50% overnight, and that kind of led, led to some more blood in the broader markets. Now, the reason for that is that they basically announced that 40% of their deposits had been withdrawn. So they went from over $230 billion in assets under management to around about 100 And that was within, mm. you know, basically since the SVB situation. Um, so share market reacted negatively they've announced they're going to try and uh cut costs they've got this great strategic option you ready for this you've never heard of this before great strategic option of uh firing people <laughs> <laughs> that's their way they're going to save themselves so yeah it's not looking too good for them so that makes no sense to me right like how are you going to reclaim the profitability from what you described as many large billions of dollars from wages from thousands of people like the, the two things are not even on the same scale yeah. are they it's absolute window dressing it doesn't take a genius to figure that out there's yeah. they're going to cut 20 plus five percent of their workforce and that's apparently going to get them over the line i mean it's they're a ticking time bond just like the rest of them have been to be quite honest at the moment and it's the same situation isn't it this is the same situation we saw with the others it's it's the deposit flight it's not that they're a bad bank it's not even in this case that they're necessarily doing anything wrong at all but you have money leave the bank and you just all of a sudden find yourself like in in a cascading problem welcome to the fractional uh banking system you know this this is this is what happens and uh you know a kind of a key difference between this and 2008 is that in 2008 there was a lot more risky lending practices and though that still does happen today right that still does contribute a bit it is a much uh a much larger reason for these collapses is just kind of people being fearful and taking their money out. And that's the bigger reason as opposed to just risky lending practices like we've seen in the past. Yeah. So my next question is, will they actually collapse? And I like in the past, this would not have been a question because you would you would almost say in the situation they're in, you know, yeah, they're definitely going to collapse. But do we know that these days? Because we've had this concept of of um no bank being, you know, too small mm. to fail almost you've, you, you've got those sort of um, implicit guarantees from the government that they're going to protect depositors not necessarily protect shareholders or banks but protect depositors what what do you see going on here do they collapse do they get bought out what what's going on so it is highly likely that they will go bankrupt in fact i would almost i mean again if you're saying you're going to fire a portion of your staff and that's going to bring you over the line like obviously you're in financial trouble so given what's going on and they've already had a rescue package right banks actually other banks other regional banks actually helped them out and gave them 30 billion dollars in like rescue funds right and then this has happened so so it doesn't really matter they're they're probably going to go bankrupt now the question is is the government going to step in and save them and i think given that what we've been seeing with sbb you know with credit swiss how ubs stepped in but there's also, also some government components to that step in as well Mm -hmm. I think we'll see a similar thing here and analysts are already actually forecasting that there's going to be kind of um, not necessarily like a government takeover, but, you know, bailout slash takeover slash um, financial help. It can be 
a bailout in other words to in other terms because that's what we've seen happening isn't it where you effectively got the government guaranteeing um or making a pretty good deal so that someone else will buy them so that it doesn't look like it's a government bailout yeah but at the end of the day it's a government bailout right like Which it's the UBS, the ubs yep. example for that one so i think that very likely they're going to go bankrupt and not as likely but probably more than 50 percent that they're uh you know going to be helped by the government in some capacity and I, I've been reading a little bit. Um, there was an excellent tweet put out by Jim Bianco over the last uh, couple of days where he's been referring to this as a bank walk. So where you have this concept of bank run where everyone just pulls all their money all at once, he's making the the point that the money is just draining relentlessly out of these regional banks. And even what was surprising, I think, was it was also coming out of the big banks. So you've just got this deposit flight that is relentless week after week, day after day. Um, so it's more like a walk than a run, but he he looks at it as there's no exit from this, that um, while the situation remains as it is, where we've got the inverted yield curve and banks aren't actually profitable from their core business, which is, you know, taking money from depositors and lending it out, that, yeah, you know, we're going to continue to see this and we're going to see more of this exact same situation happen. So with that in mind and, and sort of that analysis, that Jim Bianco analysis, what do you sort of see for the future or, or what the fallout will be in the global markets? Because if it's going to be continuing, do we continue to see fallout across the, the markets generally? Yeah, so um, that's a very great point by Bianco there. And I would say that what I was going to say to answer this question was the market analysis. The interesting part about this bank collapsing is that it's uh, happened like a month, a month and a half after all the other ones, right? So it's yeah. not in this cluster that we've seen. So it kind of leads to Bianco's point that this could be a long-term systemic issue and this could be a consequence of the bank walk because people are going to slowly bring their money out. Mm -hmm. And that's going to mean that we're going to have kind of a long-term issue where we have a bank every month or two or whatever, you know, start to hear rumours and go down as opposed to what happened in 2008 or what happened a couple of months ago where it was just, you know, one week or two weeks of intense... Um, you know, situations and some of the metrics actually reflect this notion. For example, consumer confidence came in a lot lower than anticipated this month. And uh, there's an index called the KBW Regional Banking Index, which is at an all time low as well. So I think people are starting to expect this to potentially be a long term issue. And then also today, as a consequence of, um, you know, First Republic, their sh share price going down, we saw. The NASDAQ go down around 2% and the S&P go down 1.6%. So global markets as well are reacting in the short term to, to negativity. And I, I do wonder about that because even though you're pointing out that, that people might be prepared a little bit for this being drawn out, in some ways we're not used to drawn out um, credit crisis or banking crises, no. crises at all because what we're used to is you know, you get that fear and a big sharp drop and everyone panicking and then the government stepping in and bailing everyone out and then we we go on with a brand new cycle again. So in some ways, we we really aren't prepared for a drawn out um, extended period of time where banks are just falling every week and we've got, you know, um, Branko coming on and <laughs> telling us about the next bank that's that's fallen. So it really does feel a little bit different to how it has operated in the past. So the outcome may be different as well. Great for content, though. That's yeah, great for content. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So, if you if you're comparing this specific situation to some of those other bank collapses, um, maybe just sort of zooming out again, what are some of the key trends that you can see um, emerging there? Are there things we need to be on the lookout for going forward? You know, what what are sort of the the, the bits that we can expect you to be saying in the future about the next bank that falls? What what's really driving some of this? Yeah, I think, I think you mentioned this earlier, but this idea where um, a trend that's already kind of forming is that the government will just be bailing out any bank, like we saw with SVB and Credit Suisse and potentially this much smaller bank as well. Like there's just a lot of money that they want to be, they want to be protecting these institutions. Mm -hmm. So that could be something that maybe we could expect. Like you don't want to rely on that, obviously, but um, in terms of just a trend that could appear, and then just the other trend is just that these things could happen very sporadically. And, you know, there might not, we might not actually get the rumors that we've seen. Like with this first Republic one, it was an announcement. 
where the share price just rocketed. And he did have that rescue package yeah. a month and a half ago, but all seemed well, and that wasn't the case. So these things could continue to be very sporadic, and then we could also continue to see just the government protect depositors at records and levels we haven't seen before. And and that's really consistent. I think that's a message we've been saying um, through yourself and and the guests we've had on this program where we're just saying volatility, right? Like we're, we're heading into this period of higher volatility because there's so many factors all coming together at once that you can just have banks failing or, or announcing fail, failures overnight that weren't foreseen. All, all these things can just be really volatile and it makes it really tricky um, to be able to know exactly what's going to happen going forward. Um, I suppose the one the one thing that I'm starting, that I have been looking more at and we've started talking about is this idea of liquidity. And I actually see the fact that it is so unstable and volatile as probably a bad news is good news type scenario longer term because ultimately it shows that the tightening of liquidity that's been happening is not sustainable because it's, you know, we, we said many months ago, that they'll continue until they break stuff. They're clearly breaking stuff yeah. now. We're seeing breaks all over the place. Uh, so, And we know what comes next after that, and that's more um, central bank liquidity coming into the system. So there, there probably is a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of risk assets, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything's going to get solved. It's just you know pushing the problem further down the track by printing more money to paper over it. Yeah, and then also like there's going to be a lagging effect from that so in the yes. event that they reverse their policy it's still going to have six to nine months of just those previous rate hikes coming into effect so you could see more bank collapses for half a year even um after they've announced rate cuts in some crazy world where you know they they change their mind well we've got um the thanks branco of doom we'll call you so he's <laughs> come back on here but no there i at least i threw in a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel there but <laughs> yeah no it, it it's not all like you know it's it's not all bad news it's just just on wednesdays <laughs> <laughs> i love it all right well thank you so much um, everyone right. everyone does appreciate that so thanks for coming on thanks See you uh, remember Peace. everyone you know any comments questions reach out. Um, I know there were some um, questions and comments around the the platinum discussion on Monday, um, some points of clarification that people are making. So thank you for those. We'll um, hopefully when, when Alex is back on on Monday, she'll be able to address any of those, but uh, we, we do read all of that and, and appreciate all that feedback. So keep that coming. Um, that's us for today. There's actually still more data coming out this week because we've got more uh, inflation data coming out of the US and and GDP data and things to watch over the next couple of days. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that and we'll be back to talk about that next week. So um, have a great rest of the week, everyone, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.